Okay. All right. So um, let's pray and then we'll uh, start. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. Right. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for, for the privilege of, um, Lord, knowing your word, Lord. We thank you for the even for the privilege of, Lord, carrying your word in our hearts, in our minds. And, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of, um, Lord, that you give us to, Lord, carry your word into the lives of people, Lord, to communicate your word, Father God. What a privilege it is, Father God. We thank you for your thoughts, your views, um, your life, which is in the word, Father God. We thank you. Lord, I pray that uh, may we as individuals Lord, experience that firsthand, Lord, uh, even today, Master. Lord, I pray that uh, as we go through this day and as we, Lord, look into your word, Father God, I, I pray that as we meditate on your word, Master, that um, that we will experience the power, the beauty, Lord, uh, in your word, Master. And uh, let that let the power of your word transform us. Let the power of your word renew us, refresh us, Lord, strengthen us for all that you have for us in the coming days, God. We thank you. In Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we will, uh, last class, we looked at us being New Testament ministers, right? So we before that we studied about um, how Jesus, how the Lord Jesus ministered the word, and um, as New Testament ministers of the word of God, what are some things that uh, you know we we learnt? So um, today, <clears throat> yeah, we'll just continue with that. Um, so we we I think the last class we ended by saying that. Um, you know, when we look at uh, fresh revelation, you know, the, especially we are, as ministers of God, we are always, you know, we could be under pressure to share something fresh, share something new. Every time you are given an opportunity, you know, I want to bring something new. <clears throat> and then we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to bring bring something totally radically new uh, to, you know, the, the audience to whom we are, you know, ministering. So while that is a... Uh, you know, it's it's a good expectation to have. Well, you know, asking God, Lord, you teach me something new, something fresh that I can share with the uh, with the congregation, right? But we need to know that um, God also adds on to what already is there, what is already revealed, right? So it need not be something drastically new, but it can be something that the Lord adds on, like a line upon line. Like a precept upon precept, like we see in Isaiah, right? So it can be like adding a layer of understanding to a topic which is already there, right? For example, if you want to look at evangelism, right? Adding a layer of understanding or revelation to what we already know or what the church already knows, you know, that is also revelation. Right, something that God reveals, something the Spirit of God wants the people to be established in. So we uh, we can go with that, right? We can receive that, we can go with that, and we can share that, right? Um, so the the first part is that uh, that we receive the revelation from God, receive the revelation from the Holy Spirit, and then we share share it, right? So when we personally receive a revelation from the Lord about a topic right where the word becomes flesh in us it results in us ministering effectively okay is results in us ministering in a very authentic way out of our personal conviction it results in us ministering with authority and uh, with boldness right so which is very essential for any minister of god right so you don't want to repeat something which, you know, just repeating for the sake of repeating uh, because it sounds nice. It's like a good catchphrase, right? Uh, like, for example, you know, every believer is a minister, right? I, I think we repeat it over and over again in here, AP, APC, right? But do you have a, you know, revelation of it, right? And from which part of scripture do we actually share that? Okay, any, any answers? Yeah. 
question yeah. we at apc we believe every believer is a minister so minister referring to preaching the word or so every believer is a minister of god in whatever way god has called us to minister every believer is a is a you know a communicator a proclaimer of the truth of god you know in that sense yes but why do we say every believer is a minister yeah so that is the great commission itself but specifically um we we see that every believer is actually a minister of god right um mm okay um like you know it 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 comes from the passage where surprisingly like where it comes from the passage where it talks about some people are called to do certain kinds of ministry okay it comes from that passage which is ephesians chapter 4 okay so if you look at ephesians 4 um right ephesians chapter 4 uh verse 11 okay so ephesians 4 11 talks about the fivefold ministry where it is it is not for all right it's very clear it says and he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers so that's how you know verse 11 goes so which means there is uh, only one or only some right it's not all but if you look at ephesians 4 verse 12 it says this fivefold exists for the equipping of the saints okay you see that in verse 12 for the equipping of the saints which means the separated ones the consecrated ones which means all believers so the fivefold which is for some is for the equipping which is for all all the saints um and it says for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of christ right so it is for the work of ministry so this equipping is for the work of ministry for the saints of god so every saint of god which means every child of god is to be equipped for ministry which means in god's heart every believer every child of god is a minister right so the fivefold exists where some are called in order to equip the all for the work of ministry so that's why you know every believer is in need a minister and to serve uh, in whatever way god calls every believer is a minister right so so yeah the thing is this that when we have um, you know a revelation of it you know that's what we're talking about when we have a personal revelation of it then we are able to speak with a lot more conviction right when we personally see it in the word when god gives an understanding of uh, the word to our hearts um then we are able to speak with conviction with authority and with also with much courage and boldness right um so i just want to ask us you know uh, any 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 aspect of god's truth has god given us given you a personal revelation or conviction you know if you would like to share about that any aspect of god's truth you know like something like this you know has god you know, spoken to you personally and you have a revelation of it you know you could share that anything anything about the truth of god's word any aspect of god's word It could be anything from genesis to revelation anything that any aspect where you you got a revelation personal revelation um any anyone and yeah okay yeah so uh, i was reading genesis and about uh, jacob's story yeah uh, <clears throat> like uh, how 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 he uh, uh, how he how he uh, born how oh, he was born okay uh, born esa mm-hmm. and all like that na and so i was reading that whole story uh, from the birth he is a cheater like mm. people uh, we used to look like that. 
so uh, when i was reading that thing so uh, once a time uh, esa went to uh, hunt uh, hunt and uh, because his father told him to bring some right. uh, sacrifice for me so um, i will give you all blessings but uh, uh, but what uh, jacob's mother did uh, she prepared jacob uh, and she told you go and uh, i'm uh, i'm i'm doing everything for you mm. i'm doing everything for you you just go to your father and receive those blessings yeah so when i was reading that so so god talked me about this like uh, we are same like we are the cheaters we did all mm -hmm. bad things and uh, it's comparison to myself okay like, uh, we are the cheaters we did all bad things and all but uh, you know, who deserve the all things all blessings from god mm -hmm. it's like jesus and mm -hmm. when i read that thing he wear those uh, goat skin to mm -hmm. look like uh, look yeah. like the elder brother uh, yeah he, he, elder brother so i got like we are uh, wearing jesus mm. and when we go in the front of god he he didn't look us like we are uh, i'm bimbal i'm mm. a sinner he mm. looks like i'm a jesus he he thought like uh, esav like mm. so i i get this like god is telling like you you are a jesus like mm. and uh, we are having that those blessings which jesus have and we are receiving through jesus mm. so this was uh, because of the covenant because of uh, what jesus did for us on the cross okay well thanks thank you yeah. anyone else anyone anything asapu thing you want to say yeah any anything that uh, you know recent times you know anything that um, that you were reading and then you got a um, you know a revelation of when we are looking at parable of lost son sorry uh, looking lost at for prodigal son mm -hmm. uh, before we did against to go will of god sin but when we decide in, my, in our heart repent ourselves so the prodigal son will tell i am not worthy to in front of you because i seen in front of you. so when i when i read to this literally i feel like i i always feel like i not worthy to worship him to praise him but when i go through all those things reading this pra, pra, parabola god literally speak to me and we are worthy to him because god everlasting love mm. and kindness and mercy is of him right right yeah true thank you yeah yeah anyone else <clears throat> when i was just thinking in the recent week and the recent few months like you know uh, why jeremiah 29 11 was echoing so much sorry why 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 was jeremiah 29 11 mm -hmm. echoing so much in my mind it was like you know at the age of 15 20 the thought process the desire the plan the ambition was totally more inclined to cricket and uh, later on it was more into a corporate life and both of which i never gave up cricket i thought i'll start and end my life in cricket and uh, later on it was more about you know with icc with the corporate form i thought this is where i'm going to retire i started liking it and post covid things uh, fell apart in life and personal life corporate life and uh, everything else but now when the way god has actually got me here and thing no it's now i can surely say that you know his plans are far far better than mm. what we can actually you know figure out plan for our life mm. Uh, mm. in cricketing analogy if i have to just say like you know obviously at this age where i am like the innings would have got over mm. but now it's like the new innings is just set aside for his mm. glory so the way he actually plans and orchestras in our life mm. uh, thing i've planned he's given me that grace to do at that season right and after that it's a different season that he's actually taken us through mm. so by far uh, today also just prior to your class we were uh, talking about past nancy was talking about uh, past nancy past about isaiah verse you know your thoughts are uh, 
uh, yeah. to thing and my thoughts are higher and higher than mine. so it's just an assurance that you know we as human minds we think very very small of a big god hmm. but god thinks very big of small people like us right right yeah thank you yeah so this kind of um, personal revelations right uh, which means that god you know this is this scripture that we know but there's a depth to knowing this scripture because personally uh, either through an experience or experience experiential learning or through our you know our spirit receiving the deeper truth um it becomes it, it literally becomes flesh in us word becomes flesh in us and it becomes part of us right so every time we share that you know it is with so much of inner conviction and with a personal experience of it you know we have personally experienced that word so it comes across we are able to communicate it with so much of conviction and authority yes with the you know enabling power of the holy spirit right so so that is something that um, that we need to um, uh, we need to actually receive we need to ask the lord receive and also convey that right so which is the next thing which is that continuous revelation gives birth to continuous ministry which means this is what you know this is what a normal course of ministry is right so we continually seek the lord we continue you know uh, spend time in his um, i think um, somebody has a question or um did somebody have a question um or raise their hands uh the pastor it was just me i just wanted to quickly share something on on those lines yeah if it's if it's possible basically sure. what's happened was uh, uh, um, uh i've been praying for a friend of mine um, and praying with him he's uh, suffering from cancer basically and he's on palliative care but mm. the lord uh, has told me to pray for him and he's not a christian so i'm i pray with him and i try to read the bible and bring the word to him a bit little by little and mm. the other day i was uh, praying and uh, when i just opened my my bible the verse that came was from mark 2 1 you know because i i kept thinking to myself whether whether can i am i doing the right thing am i you know is is, mm. is am i following what jesus wants me to do and then mm. in then in the when jesus heals the paralyzed man you know his friends bring him over and uh, you know because of the faith of his friends he was he was healed and that mm. sort of just inspired me it gave sort of it really hit me to say that no no what you're doing is right follow this line because because of your faith you know he will be healed and that that was just a direct revelation to me wow thank you yeah thanks for sharing that wonderful so so the thing is this that um, yeah i mean see th- this is not a substitute for not studying the word of god or you know in context and the 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 setting in which you know the scripture has been written and all that but um when we get a personal you know deeper revelation understanding when the holy spirit teaches us and his word you know he puts his word writes his word upon our hearts then that becomes a, a continual ministry even so we receive this revelation we receive this uh, conviction and we sh- share out of that we minister out of that right um or we minister that truth uh, itself so it becomes a continual ministry right so that's why we say that continuous revelation gives birth to continuous continual ministry okay um we know that we need the anointing of the holy spirit the enlightening work of the holy spirit because he is the one who literally he is called the spirit of revelation and wisdom so he's the one who really you know whatever is covered or hidden for us to you know find for us to discover the holy spirit is the one who actually gives us that understanding he opens our eyes to the truth so um, his enlightenment his revelation is something that we you know we is something that we want something that we need right so it's not just the uh, academic learning understanding right it it needs to go beyond that right which gives that freshness which gives life right uh, well god's word is powerful by itself the logos is powerful by itself but when we 
rely on the anointing, which is the empowering work of the Holy Spirit, when we rely on the revelatory work of the Holy Spirit, and when we receive of that ministry from the Holy Spirit, and when we minister right, out of that, then it becomes something that is very fruitful, very effective, because the Holy Spirit knows the needs of the people, right? And the Holy Spirit ministers. Uh, when we minister, you know, we minister the word that is given to us uh, with all these aspects, right? So, which is which becomes fruitful in the lives of people. Okay. So, let's look at. Uh, let's just move on to Second um, uh, Corinthians three. Okay, Second Corinthians three talks about the new covenant. Second Corinthians three three also talk. It compares the you know the old and the new. And um, yeah, so it talks about um, us as ministers of God, right? So let's let's look at that. Um, okay, verse four, and we have such trust through Christ toward God. Okay, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death, okay, referring to the old covenant, written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be even more glorious, not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had, has glory, had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Okay, um, And then he goes on to say uh, about Moses and, and uh, about the, you know, about the, even the current situation where when the law is read, there is a veil on the hearts of people and so on. But he's contrasting between the old covenant and the new. And in doing so, he's talking about the New Testament ministers, which is all of us, right? New Testament ministers. So one thing that we see is that, you know, when we look at the Old Testament, we always go, wow, right? God, you did so much. God, you did wonderful things. Uh, and in the old, so Paul is saying, you know, in the old covenant, covenant if these things were glorious, the teaching, the revelation, the works of God, if it was glorious, the new covenant is even more glorious, right? So that's the truth. So as a New Testament minister, yes, it's good to look back and say, God, you did some amazing things, but we need to understand that as New Testament ministers, we need to be, we are part of a covenant that is even more glorious. We are part of a ministry of the Spirit, which is even more glorious, right? So, so that is that is something that we are part of. That is something that we are invited, and it's a privilege to be part of something that is even more glorious. Okay. So when we look at Second um, Corinthians three, we see that uh, right from the verse two, he says, "You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men." Okay. So who is he Paul uh, referring to? He's looking at the Corinthian church, and he's saying, "You are our letter." Uh, known and read by all men. So he's looking at people and he's saying, people are actually looking at you, studying you, observing you, and it's as if you are actually passing on a message to them, right? It is as if, you know, you're the Bible that people are reading, okay? And in doing so, he's saying that, no, you are our epistle written in our hearts, okay? Um, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us. That is verse 3, right? If you see, um, second, second Corinthians 3 verse 3, right? Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, 
not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart okay so two things we learned the first thing is that paul is saying that you know you are an epistle written in our hearts so which means that we allow god to write people in our hearts so what does that mean practically we we ask god to allow god to give us a burden for the people right so which means that when we minister we don't minister disengaged from people we don't minister as some professionals who come and do our job but we ask god to give us a burden for the people we are ministering to people and paul says that, that you are an epistle written by the holy spirit on our hearts and so people were written we you know we know that god's word is written in uh, on people's hearts but people were also written god gave them a burden god gave them this bunch of people to be written in their hearts right the second thing we see is that god the, the kind of writing that he does okay when you say writing we're talking about ministering right we're talking about the truth being brought into our lives maybe even a kind of a burden being brought into our lives responsibility you know that god wants us to carry on being brought into our lives right so here this this verse that we just read now says that uh, verse 3 you are an epistle of christ epistle means what does epistle mean epistle ha huh? sorry epistle is just letter okay so hindi ha uh, so it's a letter so he's saying you're a lit- letter of christ okay so he's looking at somebody and saying you're a letter of christ okay so which means there's a message on your life there's a message that you are conveying and that message has been written by christ so he's saying that um you are a letter okay ministered by us so you you we served and we ministered but that writing happened not with ink even though we ministered we served we brought we shared the truth of god's word written not with ink but by the holy spirit okay so he's talking about the fact that god ministered even though he used us physically but it was not a physical natural whatever method it was not natural material like ink but you were written by the holy spirit uh by the spirit of the living god on your heart you know on a, uh, on on your heart the holy spirit ministered to your heart not on tablets of stone right but on tablets of flesh so tablets of stone referring to the you know the commandments that was given by god to moses uh, when he was on the on the mountain and you know he literally wrote on that stone uh, tablets and he gave right so uh, referring to that so he's saying you know the holy spirit is doing a different kind of ministry different kind of writing and that is directly on people's hearts okay so as new testament ministers we minister right we bring the truth we bring the message we share but the holy spirit is the one who writes on people's hearts so he's writing so we don't have access actually you know we cannot write uh, the the kind of depth or the kind of reach that the holy spirit has we don't have right so that is why we are dependent on him that he can actually reach in to people's hearts you know who are seemingly closed to whatever you know to you to you to us maybe uh, as human beings they, they might be close to us not giving access completely close but the holy spirit can reach in the holy spirit can um, you know can write upon their hearts right the other thing that we see where paul very clearly declares is that we are not that we are sufficient of ourselves right saying that it's not that i have great ability it's not that i have great talent it's not that i have you know great natural skills right so we are not our sufficiency is not from ourselves that is what it means right so sufficient to carry out the work sufficient you know sometimes we think okay we can do it you know i can sing i can i can i can speak i can do this i can do it myself but the thing is this writing of people's heart no one can do it with natural ability because it's by the ink it's not by ink but by the holy spirit so he's saying our sufficiency is not from ourselves what does he say not that we are sufficient of ourselves or we think as anything as being from ourselves verse 5 
our sufficiency is from is from God. I'm right? saying our sufficiency is from God, which means that if God, uh, if if there's anything that we can say that we are able to do this and minister here and minister in this manner, that sufficiency comes from God. Okay. Then something that something else that we see in verse six. Who also has made us ministers, sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Okay, so not of the letter, not compared to like the Old Testament ministry, not of the law, but of grace of the Holy Spirit. Right? The law kills, and literally, you know, that is what it does, but the Holy Spirit brings life. Right? So that is what we see in Romans chapter 8. Right? It is not a ministry of condemnation, but it's life giving. It's um, uh, let's let's look at that uh, verse also, uh, chapter eight and verse one. Right? It says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So he's comparing two different things, two different laws, um, a law of the spirit of life, a law of sin and death. So he's he's comparing and then he's saying, this is what it does. So um, verse 6, he has made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter or not of the law, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life okay so we are ministers of this life giving spirit of this life giving message okay so we need to look at ourselves in that way this is what we identify with okay and of course 7 to 11 is talking about how the ministry of the spirit is much more glorious because it's a new covenant and so which means a greater revelation of the truth of who god is a greater understanding of it a greater manifestation of the power and the glory of god which reveals who he is and so on right and so he says we have great boldness since we have such hope verse 12 we have great boldness of speech okay so this is who we are as new testament ministers okay so there's no reason to be intimidated there's no reason to be overwhelmed right um by comparing ourselves with anyone or even comparing ourselves with Old Testament ministers or servants or saints of God, right? So we have, we are in a new uh, dispensation. We are even in a better covenant and more glorious covenant. And he says, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing that you can compare. You can't even compare with the old because it's a more glorious ministry, is a more glorious, um, you know, uh, the work, right? So verse 11, what passing away is glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Okay, uh, It says passing away because one is referring to the, the glory which was on Moses' face as he came down from the mountain. Right? It was shining, but it was also you know, fading. Right? Over a period of time, it would fade. So, um, so that's a, it's a, it was something that was passing away, but then he says that this is something that remains. Right? It's even much more glorious. Okay. Okay. Um, as ministers of God, if you look at one Corinthians fourteen and verse six, okay, one Corinthians fourteen um, and verse six. Okay, uh, Paul, while talking about the gifts of the Spirit and the proper use of the gifts and so on. So he's comparing with you know praying in tongues or speaking in tongues, and he's actually talking about a message in tongues, right? He's talking about the the use of tongues, public address of tongues, which is verse verse six is, uh, and then, so he says, and now brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, right? If I'm going to give a public message in tongues or address in tongues, how can you be benefited, right? So. The answer is no, you're not being benefited. So he's saying, how shall I profit you unless I speak to you? And he talks about several ways in which he brings God's word. Okay, If you look at that verse, he says, let's just read it first. 
how shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Right? So he's just comparing, contrasting the gift of tongues, the message in tongues. You know, we should understand it in its context because tongues is there for personal edification. It builds us up. We know, you know the various ways in which we are benefited when, it, when, we, when it comes to praying, speaking in tongues. But when it's a public gathering or addressing, we know that it is not of use, right? Unless there is interpretation. So he's actually talking about that and he's saying, unless I speak to you either by revelation. Okay, so that word revelation, which means uncovering something that is hidden, right? So revealing something that is hidden. So, you know, when we talk about mysteries, when we talk about these things that are hidden, these are hidden so that it can be revealed to us, right? These are, at first glance, it might be, it might seem hidden. It's a mystery. Why is it? Because the Holy Spirit wants us to discover it. The Holy Spirit wants us to go on that journey in order to discover it. So that is what revelation is, right? Unveiling or discovering of hidden truth, which is there in the Word. Right? The second thing that we see is that, what is the other word that he uses? By revelation, by knowledge right so knowledge when we say it is spiritual information right so knowledge that is information that is put together spiritual nature uh, of a spiritual nature so he's saying okay it will profit which means you know revelation it profits you if i come by the revelation of the holy spirit and if i come and teach a content which is revealed by the holy spirit it it brings edification to you right it benefits you. Secondly, when I teach and I instruct and convey spiritual information, information which is of spiritual nature, that again blesses you, benefits you. Third thing that he uses is prophesying. Okay, so he's saying unless um, by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying. Okay, so so what is prophesying? What is prophecy? You all learnt it, man through man. Okay, so um, someone who is, uh, if you look at that verse, uh, that passage itself previously, he says, um, you know, he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to man. Right. So you're speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, something that is revealed by the Holy Spirit, something that is timely, something that is that brings edification, exhortation, and comfort. Of course, it also has this aspect of future, like foretelling. It could even have aspects of correction and so on, right? When the when, when you're talking about a mature prophetic gifting, right? But this is it. It is something that is inspired by the Holy Spirit, inspired by God, in order to convey to a from a group to a group prophesying. So he's saying prophesying. Okay, that benefits, right? Then. Teaching, okay. So, what is teaching? So, uh, you know, teaching is something that is passed on that brings a person a better understanding, right, of a of a subject, of a topic, that that brings clarity and takes a person from maybe ignorance to knowledge, right? Ignorance to knowledge, or from you know immaturity to maturity. So that is what teaching is. So, so he's saying you know, all these things I'm communicating, I'm able to communicate as a New Testament minister of God. So as New Testament ministers of God, maybe God will, you know, uh, we have all these avenues, all these, you know, things that are open in order to communicate truth, in order to proclaim the truth of God, right? As we, as we say, as we preach the word of God. Right. It can be in revelation and prophesying and knowledge and teaching. Right. So teaching, there's there's a lot of explanation. There's a lot of depth, and uh, it brings it enables a person to be established in the truth. It enables a person to come out of ignorance and into light and knowledge. It brings a person out of you know immaturity and to greater levels of 
sorry immaturity to greater levels of maturity okay so so this is amazing when we consider that as a new testament minister i'm in a glorious ministry glorious covenant um, nothing that can be compared to the old testament ministers yes god did something wonderful but he has something more for us as new testament ministers and we looked at that whole thing of you know how it's a glorious thing and also many times we think okay am i sufficient am I, do i have the ability do i you know do i have what it takes to be a minister of god well that question is answered by the power of the holy spirit the ability that the holy spirit gives right so yes there is a there is value in studying there is value in preparing there is value in making ourselves available in the hands of god right but who makes us sufficient who makes us able it's god himself the spirit of god right so that that should also give us great reassurance right and we other looked at other aspects of how the holy spirit writes people in our hearts no not just revelation understanding but also people right the audience to whom we are bringing the message he writes them into their hearts meaning that he brings you know puts them in our heart gives a burden about them maybe even understanding of who they are a burden for who they are what they are in our hearts maybe a burden about their needs you know specifics of their needs everything he writes people in our hearts right and he is the one who writes on the hearts of people now that also you know sometimes we might have a you know wrong expectation or put a lot of wrong pressure on ourselves saying you know i need to bring them out of darkness into light no it's not us you know we are there as vessels we are there as instruments in god's hands but it is the holy spirit who writes on people's hearts because it's not natural methods like paul says you know it's not a natural material like ink but it's actually by the power of the holy spirit is the holy spirit who writes on people's hearts right so um so therefore we can say we have more gold uh, boldness and we can minister in all these different kinds of ways right any questions here or anything that you want to share um okay so let's just go into um some uh you know the next topic which is about when it comes to preparing for a message okay some guidelines uh, some things to keep in mind right preparing for a message okay um well let's say okay uh, there is an occasion there is an opportunity uh, to prepare uh, to share so how do i how do i prepare for it okay some things to keep in mind um let's look at that right so first thing to understand is that god this is how it happens usually right god draws out what we have put in or sowed in right so which means that even prior to you know this being communicated you know, there has to be the season or there has to be this opportunity or time spent where we allow god to put in and so what we have put in but what we have you know exposed ourselves to when it comes to the word of god to the work of the holy spirit and we're saying god you know you write upon my heart you know give me understanding give me revelation right not for the point for the sake of preaching right so not for the sake of preaching but really for my own life for my own relationship with you for my own walk with you god you know you write upon my heart you put in my life and and we intentionally you know we looked at um, meditating on the word of god right the whole thing of how do we meditate on the word of god um like we reflect on the word of god we we study the word of god we think deeply about the word of god we you know we go over 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 and over uh, uh, you know in it i know of someone who uh, a friend of mine actually was sharing he's no more but he was talking about romans 8 and he said that for many months right for many months he was just stuck on romans 8 verses 1 and 2 right it says that there is no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit 
for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So it was there. He was just on it for not just few days, but months. Right? This is what he was stuck on it. God was teaching him. God was revealing so much, you know, from these two verses. So much of freedom that he was getting on various aspects that was holding him captive. So this truth, hey, I'm liberated. I'm liberated. I'm no more in condemnation as a new creation. I'm liberated. I'm not walking according to the flesh, but I'm walking according to the spirit. And the law of, you know, the spirit of um, uh, life, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, you know, this is what I am. So this has set me free from the law of sin and death. So, so what, what is happening is that we are sowing to the spirit. We are not sowing to the flesh, but sowing to the sowing to the spirit, and we are actually exposing ourselves, making every opportunity to intentionally draw from God. Right? Um, another thing that should help us is also what we see in Mark chapter four, right? In the parable of the sower, if you see the Lord Jesus explains this whole thing of um, the sower, he explains to the disciples about um, you know the, the because the disciples come and ask about the, the question about what does it mean, etc. And then he, he shares them, uh, shares with them about it. And then he goes on to say, verse 24, okay? Mark chapter 4, verse 24, goes on to say, and he says, Take heed what you hear, okay? With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given okay take heed what you hear so what does that mean saying be careful how you hear the measure that you use the the uh, the volume that you allow to hear this, you know if you go with that measure the same measure will be used for you right it, in the same measure it will be given for you which means that have a hunger have a hunger for the word of god have a hunger for you know because god is not placing limits so he's, he's just left it to you. What measure are you going to God with? And what vessel are you going to? What sized vessel are you going to God with? So he's saying, with the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. So possibilities are endless, right? So you, it's up to you, the Lord says. So, so with regard to preparation, this is an important part. What am I putting in? Right? What extent uh, to what extent am i sowing god's word in my heart so it's just up to up to us you know the greater the hunger because the lord says you know the hunger that we go with well he will satisfy he will pour water on him who is thirsty but that again creates even greater hunger for us to go you know pursue him even more right okay so we'll stop here um, so we're looking at preparing a message. So we'll continue with that topic um, in the next class, right? Okay. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.